Hey guys, Chris and Randy here with Marksman Shooting Sports and WeBuyGuns.com in Westfield, Indiana. You are watching Marksman TV. We have been super busy, but today we wanted to do just a quick unboxing video. We have just a few guns to go over today, so let's go ahead and jump into it now. All right, guys, jumping into this. First up, we have one from a customer in North Carolina. Big thank you for selling this one to us. All right, here we have what appears to be a Springfield, Ooh, Team, Team Springfield, Springfield. Ooh. 1911 A1, stainless, so I wonder if this is a loaded model, it appears like it probably is. Does have front side serrations, three dot no back sight, skeletonized trigger, a uh, added magwell, flared magwell piece, skeletonized hammer, uh, extended beaver tail safety. Very nice, 1911. This is in the older classic blue box. Uh, so this one's probably at least 10 or more years old, probably 15 yeah. years old, so that's really nice. Uh, beautiful checkered wood grips. Uh, we've talked about these Springfield 1911s on the channel before. Really good quality. Uh, they make different versions of them. The basic A1 up through the loaded models, the competition models, and things like that. I personally own just a basic stainless A1, so mine does not have these sort of enhanced features on it, and I've had mine for a little over 10 years, so excellent firearms. What do you think about the condition of that one? Just some minor handling marks, Chris. Um... A little bit of holster wear up there and a little bit on the trigger. Gun. Oh, made in Brazil. So this is actually an old, old one. Ah. I would say very good. Yeah, that is what the customer said. I'd probably, I'd probably be towards the high end of good, low end of very good. There are just quite a few little blemishes and handling, handling marks, nothing too serious. But yeah, this is an interesting one. So this is actually an imported one. Hmm. I assume they manufacture them today. I think I'm so. I'm pretty sure that they do. So yeah, nice. A very cool old, uh, older Springfield 1911. All right, next up is one from the same customer in North Carolina. Thank you for sending that in to us. What we have here, nice, clear, is a Savage Axis II and 22 ohm rifle. As you can see, it has the, uh, the very nice gray uh, green laminate thumb hole stock. It's got the upgraded Savage trigger. Um, Accu trigger. Accu trigger. Looks like the barrel's free floated in the stock. Heavy contour. Yeah, heavy contour. Oh, is that an LR or a mag? Target crowned LR. LR. Yep. Savage Mark II series has been a staple in bolt action 22 rifles for a long time. They make them in the 22 Magnum, 17 HMR. The, they make them in the Mach 2. Is that right? Yes. Yeah, they make them in lots of those different kind of low diameter or rim fire type cartridges. But they're really good, robust rifles. Uh, you can get the really basic ones in the standard uh, polymer stocks very inexpensively. The target, target barrels like this. I think that this might be an aftermarket laminate. I'm not sure if this came factory. Do you know? I, I believe it is an option, Chris. Probably a factory option. So that I'm not too sure about, but like many other things, especially in the Remfire type of realm, uh, Savage has different variety, different ways that you can buy the Mark II, but they are sort of a do everything bolt action rifle at not a very high price point. So very cool rifle. What do you think about the condition of that? Um, got a couple dings in the wood up here, but overall it's very nice. I would say very good, Chris. Yeah, I would say very good, even. I'd be okay with excellent. Yeah, there's a couple little dings in the wood, but hard to see unless you're right up on top of it. Do we have paperwork on it? Uh, we do not. Baby still inside. No paperwork in those compressors. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm sure. We'll, we'll look up what the customer said, but I'm sure we're fine on that. So. Again, big thank you to our customer in North Carolina. We'll move on to the next one. Next up is one from a customer in Colorado. Thank you very much for sending this in to us. A blue box. The blue box. We have Colt. Nice. 
nice. So uh, we have a Colt government model, 1911 here, 45 ACP. Um, this is the 80 series. Very standard Colt 1911. Um, is it a Model O? Probably is. Yes. Yeah, Model O. So it's kind of their basic, it's still the one that they're producing today. Uh, this is in your government size, so the five inch barrel. Commander's four and a quarter ish, officer's about three and a half. Uh, 45 ACP, typically find these in nine millimeter, 38 super, but 45 is obviously gonna be your most common. Their basic 1911 A1-esque uh, model offering with the checkered wood, diamond cut wood grips. Does have the 1911 profile hammer, but the A1 profile cuts in the frame blued finish nothing else really special to say about it um but it is still a colt 1911 so beautiful firearms they have a pretty decent trigger for what they are there's different stuff out on the market that market that comes standard that's a little bit better than what comes on a colt today but still classy nonetheless what do you think about that one got a takedown mark on it there a couple more scratches there from takedown and reassembly um i would other than that I would, I would say all things considered very good. Yeah, if it weren't for those takedown marks uh, right there, the little scratches from the takedown pen, which you see, I mean, running a gun store, we see these on like almost all 1911s that come in. Because of that, I would say very good. If those weren't there, I would say this were in excellent conditions. So that's the only thing I would say is really detracting it. But again, on any used 1911, on most of them, unless they're owned by people who are really careful when they disassemble and reassemble these things, you tend to always find those, what, what are known as idiot scratches. That's what the industry term is. Uh, everybody knows what you're talking about. So no dig at anybody who puts a scratch there. I put a couple scratches in 1911s there myself, I'll admit it. So anyway, very cool pistols. Very happy to get in a Colt. We will move on to the next one. All right, next up we have one from a customer in Illinois. Big thank you for selling this one to us. I bet that's a lot of fun. Green. Caught on the other side. There we go. All right. What we have, that's pretty cool. <laughs> that is cool. What we have here is a single action army essentially that has been turned into a carbine now the concept of the revolving carbine like this was actually played around with for a while but there were basically two big issues with this number one is everybody knows around the forcing cone on a revolver you get a lot of expanding gases so typically on a revolver you keep both hands behind the cylinder and a carbine like this if you have a hand up here you tend to get a lot of spatter and gases from the cylinder right into your off hand, your support hand, which cannot be very comfortable with shooting. Now there are some modern variations of the revolving rifle, like the circuit judge comes to mind. Mm -hmm. What they've actually done is mounted little heat shields onto the side of the front of the frame to block from that. But on things like this, and then earlier examples where this had been tried, they didn't have that. And that would typically lead the shooters to having an uncomfortable experience. Second war with a longer barrel like this, you don't have any type of hand guards. So you're going to have a lot of heat built up in the barrel, which is not going to be easy to hold on to. So with this, you don't really use it like a traditional carbine. You'll kind of keep your hand back, I guess, here or here. I don't know, somewhere. <laughs> and you're going to ultimately end up using it like this without any type of support on the front end, essentially. But it's just not the most comfortable thing, but it's kind of different and unique. Kind of, kind of an oddity. So, very cool. This, I believe, is made by Uberti. I'm mm -hmm. sure it is. Um, yeah, Uberti. The Cattleman Carbine, probably imported by Taylor. Uh, American Carbine 45 Stoger. So, Stoger, Taylor, and Cimarron import a lot of the Uberti products. That's what this is. So, Uberti is based out of Italy. They make a lot of replica, sort of old Western firearms, including the Single Action Army. Uh, which Taylor calls the Cattleman, Cimarron calls the P-Series revolver. So it's all the same gun, just marketed and branded differently. This one's brought in by Stoger, but a really cool, kind of different and unique firearm. What do you think about that? I say excellent condition, Chris. My yeah, customer says there's uh, there's actually a mark right there. Yeah, there's see. a safe ding in the stock. Let's see the other side. Right there too, a safe ding. Mm. I'd probably say high end, a very good, yeah. low end, excellent. I'd be okay either way. Customer said very good. So we're good with that. Very cool firearm. Let's move on to the next one. 
All right, last but not least, we have one from a customer in Kentucky. Big thank you for selling us this one. Let's see what we got. I'm cutting against a non seam. Oh, that's a seam. Daewoo K2, specifically, this is a DR200. So, uh, in South Korea, they had used the Daewoo manufacturer of what was known as the K2 rifle, which was their standard issue military rifle. They had different versions, like the carbine version, the K1 or K1A1, which is really more their submachine gun or tactical role type rifle, but the K2 was the general infantry rifle. Now, prior to the assault weapons ban, the K2 would come into the United States as a pre-ban rifle. And they were brought in by many different companies. I believe Stoger brought them in. Uh, well, Stoger's the only one that's coming to mind. KSI, something like that. Um, but they were brought in under many different imported names like the AR-100 or the K2 rifle. Uh, now, after the assault weapons ban, of course, we couldn't have the pesky, you know, assault weapon type features like bayonet lugs or traditional stocks like this. So they would come in with thumbhole stocks under the moniker the DR200. So this is a post-ban K2 version. Now what a lot of people did and what has been done here is they converted it back into a traditional configuration rifle by putting sort of this type of stock on it, getting a US made pistol grip, making it more like the traditional K2 and aesthetic, which is what's been done here. So not as collectible as a pre-ban, but still no longer manufactured or imported into the United States and a cool piece of South Korean military uh, technology and history, which were actually still being used today. So very cool rifle. What do you think about that one? And, you know, it has a few handling marks on it, but I'd say probably for what is very good condition. Yeah, I'd say good to very good. It's got, it does have some handling marks on the left hand side. So it'll probably do high end good, low end very good. Customer said good, so we're good there. Very interesting rifle to end this up on. So big thank you again to our customer in Kentucky for sending us this. Uh, that's gonna end up this quick video for you guys. If you enjoyed, please let us know by hitting that like button. If you wanna see more content like this, make sure to subscribe to our channel and hit that bell notification button. Anyway, guys, we're gonna leave you off with that one. I am Chris. And I am Randy. And you are watching Marksman TV. We will see you next time. Little Rock. Little Aurora, Rock. Illinois, home of Wayne and Garth. Party on, Chris. <laughs> Party on, Randy. Walk on, Randy. Always has to correct us in front of our parents. <laughs> I wouldn't be corrected. I would go home, John. <laughs>